from his studios in New York. It's time for Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, where sports meets life. Here's your host, Dan Tortora. Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on WakeUpCallDT.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on MixLR.com backslash WakeUpCallDT. It is an honor and a privilege, as always, to speak on the recruiting trail with the players around the country and the world, some coming from outside of the country, that make their decision on where they're going to spend their time collegiately. And Steve Linton is, is here with me right now. Steve coming in as a defensive end for Syracuse. He was part of the second National Signing Day, that being on February 6th. He said yes to Syracuse coming from Dublin High School in Dublin, Georgia. And we are now having him on the show for the first time. Steve, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. And, and Steve, you and I are talking on the heels of of you having a, a, a very interesting situation here, and that is the fact that your cousin had a baby. So first and foremost, I know we talked about it off the air, but congratulations, and can we give the baby a shout-out? What's the baby's name? Uh, the baby's name is Ashlyn Charster. And just what you could say, you know, with your cousin having a baby, just, you know, what that meant to you to be there and be a part of it, because so many people are focused on what you do on the football field, but it's – you know, life is so much more than that. So just what you could say about being there for this special moment. Uh, it was a pleasure uh, being uh, for my cousin when she had a baby because me and my cousin, like, both flat ties. When we've been riding it together, we've been together all our life. Uh, we grew up together. When my, when my parents go to work, I mean, I'm with her. So it was a pleasure to be there when she had a kid. And so you have that you have that close family bond and close family ties uh, to to tell everybody as well you know your your cousin's name and you know I want to shout her out here on the show as well. Uh, her name is uh, Ashwan Charleston. Uh, oh, say so, so she has, so the baby's the same name. Right. Oh, okay. So she has she has a junior, so to speak. So um, so for Ashlyn, just what you can say about what she's meant to you in in your life, like you said, I mean, you guys have grown up together and been around each other. What type of inspiration has she been for you? She's been a great inspiration. She's been a great impact in my life, like, because, like I said, we've been around each other all the time. We fuck, we fight, but we make up, because, you know, that's what family do. You know, we love each other, and she's been out for me. She took on a job. And ever since she took on a job, she has, like, everything for me. Like, if I'm hungry, she'll give me something to eat. If I ain't have no gloves for the game, she'll go get it, make, every, make sure everything's done. And and when you know, obviously, with her having the baby, um, to have her name the baby, give the baby her same name, just what that means. I mean, I would think that you would imagine that to be an honor that she, you know, gave the baby the same name that she has because, obviously, she means something to you. Yes, sir. So, you know, what can you say about what she's been? I mean, did she help you in the recruiting process? Was she there for you through the process? What can you say about that? She she helped me, but she she was just really mostly done during the recruiting process. I mean, yes, yeah, that's all. So when you had the you know the opportunity to kind of go through this process and figure out what school made sense to you, speaking once again with Steve Linton coming from Dublin High School in Dublin, Georgia, when you, when you were going through the process, Steve, just you know what you can say about kind of maybe the beginning of it. How did your recruitment start? When we go all the way back to the beginning, what was the beginning like for you? I mean, like with recruitment first started for me, it was kind of kind of scary because like I knew I could be a great player at any level at the college level be at any Pac-12 Power 5 school or something like that but it was kind of scary for me because I was having an academic situation but I wasn't really where I needed to be. I had a low ACT score and kind of a low GPA so it was kind of scary so school was coming in so ACC schools came in. They didn't really want to take a chance on me because they didn't think I was going to make it. So, I mean, my first 
Paul Fire offer was from Arizona State. Uh, a Pat Club school, Antonio Pierce had gave me an offer because he believed in me. And then that's when Syracuse rolled in and by the time in the summer. I mean, in the beginning, it was it was fun when I had started getting all my offers. It was fun getting recruited, but in the end, it got, it was nerve-wracking because, like, I want to go to this school, but this school better for me. Uh, you don't want to turn one school down because you only can go to one school, you feel me? Yeah, and when you went through that process, Steve, you know, what? Hey, obviously you chose Syracuse, but, you know, who who was the school or schools that were hard to say no to? Uh, two schools for me that was hard to say no to was South Florida and Arizona State because, I mean, they had rolled the wheels out with me. Even though I wasn't even NCAA eligible yet, they still rolled out with me to the end. And when you looked at, you know, kind of those two schools, you said Arizona State was your first Power 5 offer. What did you like about Arizona State? Besides the fact that they were, you know, with you till the end, what what were some of the other pieces that you liked about Arizona State? I mean, I love the coaching stuff. With, uh, coach Ryan, it was been a coach. I mean, it was a lot of good things about it. It's just, at the end of the day, it wasn't a good, uh, it was a benefit in my family. Like, it was so far away. And that was kind of scary for my mom because, like, I'm the only child and so I'm her only baby. So you know how that get with your mama. <laughs> and, yes, sir. So, you know, having, and I, and I do know that because I am an only child and, and I know that, you know, I mean, I didn't play football in college, but my mom was like, you know, you could go, you could go out a little bit, just don't go too far. So, you know, I totally understand that. So South Florida is closer, you know, you're in Georgia and South Florida is, you know, in the Tampa area. So uh, what can you say about, you know, South Florida and, and why they were hard to say no to? What did you like about South Florida? Uh, what I liked about South Florida was, um, Coach Strong and the way like they recruited me because they was like always here twenty four seven. Coach Coach Williams, Coach Charlie Williams, always at my school calling me out of class. And I felt like that was a good thing because he stayed down, stayed with me every day, checked up on me all the time, trying to build a relationship just like Coach Steve from Syracuse. I mean, that all meant a lot to me. And when you look at that, like you said, you know, USF was, was just there the whole time through the process, and Arizona State was there through the process. What made Syracuse different? What ultimately made the decision for you that Syracuse was was the one? I mean, what, what I mean, you know, you talk about Arizona State and your appreciation for them and your appreciation for South Florida, so why was Syracuse a little bit better than that? What made them different? What made Syracuse different was – my official visit was made it different, and it's far, but you, I, like, my family can, like, get there faster than they can get to Arizona State. So, when I was on my official visit, I was hanging out with some of the players. I mean, it's still like I just clicked with them, like, all of a sudden. Like, I didn't even know them. I just clicked with them. So, that that meant a lot to me, getting, getting a good vibe from the players and the coaches. Coach Dino Babers, uh, he he pressured me now, but I, in my head I knew I wanted to kind of come up. So after him pressured me a little bit, I knew, I was like, man, I really think I should come here because I was on the fish visit and he went through Bible verses and stuff. He was like, it was some some um, Bible verse I can't remember, but it was like it really say in the Bible. I was at Syracuse for three days, <laughs> so I was like, "That's crazy." And I was on my official visit for three days, so I was like, "That might be a sign." So you said that Dino broke out a, a Bible verse that connected to you personally that you felt like it did. Yes, sir. So, what did you like about Dino? What did you like about his personality and and just how he treated you? Uh, he treated me good, and one thing I like about Coach Babers is he uh, he treats you like family, like he like you his like he's your father or you his son, and the way he came off at me is like 
I really looked at him like he could be a second father of mine. So you see him as a second father. What What is it about his personality, the way that he treated you, that makes you say that, that he's not just a coach but he could be a father? What What about the way that he acts towards you or the way that he carries himself makes you say something like that uh, about him not just being a coach but a father figure? Because he, uh, he keeps it real with you. He, he's going to let you know what's right and what's wrong, what you're doing right and what's wrong. And... I know one day while I'm dying out, he was telling me, like, my door stay open. I don't care if I'm in the meeting. If you need to talk about something, it's something important going on. I'm here to talk with you. So that meant a lot to me. And I'm seeing the Bible verse right now where it's uh, it, it's Acts 28. Uh, it's, Acts, it's Acts chapter 28, verse 12, where this statement is made, about Syracuse, it says, and landing at Syracuse, we tarried there three days. Uh, there's also a, another thing that says, after three months, we set sail in an Alexandrian ship that had wintered in the island. Uh, it had the twin brothers as a figurehead putting in at Syracuse. We stayed there three days. So I'm guessing that Acts 28:12 is the one he used. Right. So, so he brings that. So, how does he bring that out in conversation? When did he use that? When did he say that to you, Acts twenty eight twelve, about being at Syracuse for three days and you're in Syracuse for three days? When did he say that to you? He said it to me uh, in a meeting the day the day before I was going to leave to go back home on my official visit. <laughs> That's when he brought it out. He brought it to my attention because I never thought that would be in the Bible. I never thought that would be in the Bible. So when he said that to you, you know, how close were you to committing – before he said that, and like you said, you know that that kind of that kind of you know connected to you a little bit. What were your? I mean, did, did that put you over the edge? Were you maybe thinking maybe I'm not going to go here, and it brought you back in? How, I mean, how when he when he said that verse to you from the Bible, what did it do for you? Did you get reassurance that it was the right place, and you already knew that it was, or did it help you make the decision? I mean, it kind of it kind of helped me. Uh with my decision because I like I said I come from like a church home like the one from Dublin, Georgia my church um Marco Grove I mean uh, when that came on the Bible he was like help me pay my decision but back of my head I was like uh, yeah this might this might be the school for me so you choose Syracuse over everybody else. You know, you spend that time with Dino. He's like a father figure to you. He breaks out this Syracuse three days verse in the Bible and you being at Syracuse for three days, which I got to give him props for because I didn't even know that. And, and I'm a Christian, I'm a Catholic, and I didn't even know that Acts 28.12 mentioned Syracuse. So that's, that's pretty amazing that he broke that out and because obviously there's a Syracusa in Italy and, and that was a connection. But... I think that's tremendous. So you like that. What else did you like about your time at Syracuse? How did campus feel? Maybe what you want to study there? What were some of the other pieces? I mean, at the campus, it was like, it was big. It was a big campus. It was a nice campus. I liked that about it. And it was like how they shot a couple movies in front of one of the buildings. I think it's the Adams family. So, I mean, I think it's a, a very known campus I mean and <clears throat> meeting with my, someone that maybe be my professors I mean I like them too because I want to uh, major in business technology and they got um, an IT school no sorry it's not business technology it's uh, computer technology and they got an uh, IT school that's on the rise in Syracuse and I don't really like that about it because many schools don't have an IT school so you have that connection with you as well, and Syracuse ultimately being that decision for you. After you spoke with Dino, after, like you said, he pushed you a little bit, after he used that Bible verse, you know, how long from that moment until the moment that you said, I want to come to Syracuse, how much time was in between, you know, your visit and you ultimately saying yes? I mean, I ain't going to lie. It was like, I don't know, later, because... You know, that was, like, only my third visit, and I wanted to see all five of my visits. So, like, after, like, <clears throat> the, after the fourth visit, I realized, like, I had that talk with my parents, like, what should I do? And, I mean, that was it. 
So they speak with you on it. What were, what was, you know, what did your parents have to say? What was their advice to you when you were trying to figure this out? Uh, their advice for me is like, my mom's like, look, look, they got a whole computer technology school, and other schools don't have that. So, like, she look at it long term, cause what if, what if I don't make it, make it to the NFL, then I can have something to fall back on my degree. So she was looking at it like that, and then she was like, when she was done, she had a good vibe from. And so you look at that and you look at your future and what you could have at Syracuse. Speaking here with Steve Linton from the Dublin High School in Dublin, Georgia, we look at the opportunity. You're coming in as a defensive end. Elton Robinson is going to be a senior. Kingsley Jonathan is going to be a junior. And on the other side of it, Kendall Coleman is going to be a senior. Brandon Berry will be a redshirt senior as well on the two deep for defensive ends just what you can say about what the coaching staff at Syracuse told you about coming in because they do have some guys obviously that have been out there like Kendall Coleman and Elton Robinson that are going to be vets on this team seniors on this team what did they tell you about coming in to the defensive line and playing defensive end uh they were telling me a lot about the schemes and stuff what they run and how they run the defense they were like a little more of a Pass rushing DNs. We don't want DNs to be too big. So they was like, I'm exactly what they're looking for. I mean, my first, my first step, my get off. I guess like that can help help SAQ. And when I was watching Kim and all of them, I was like, yeah, maybe this is a good fit for me because they're fast, and I feel like I'm fast. And other coaches do too. So I mean, I guess I have to be a little fast off the ball. Uh, like with me coming in, I uh, I hope everybody hopes to be playing as a freshman. But you know, sometimes you get what you want. So you, sometimes you gotta work for what you get. So I'm gonna come in, strong minded, ready to work. <laughs> Hopefully, I take somebody. Try to take somebody's spot. And you know, we look at the fact that in the world we live in today, you know, people want that immediate satisfaction. They want to go to a team. They want to play right away and whatnot. You know, you said, you know, I got to go out there. I got to work for it. I got to go get it myself. Just what you can say about that, because in in the world we live in today, the transfer portal is full. There's guys transferring all the time. So, you know, what can you say about kind of staying the course and and actually going to a school and working for your job? And if it doesn't come right away, that you don't give up on it, but that you continue to work for it. How important is it for you to come to Syracuse and know that nothing is owed to you, but you have to work for it? I mean, it make it makes me like better as a man, cause like, I mean, it's gonna be hard times trying to get on the field. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a struggle sometimes. So I mean, I think it's gonna make me better as a man, cause it teach me not to give up. Cause I know at the end, I'm gonna eventually get on the field. Cause uh, I ain't gonna give up until I get on the field. And having the opportunity as you move forward here, speaking with Steve Linton from Dublin High School in Dublin, Georgia, you know, Steve, to, to you know, wait until the second sign. There's two signing days now. It's not what it used to be. There used to be one national signing day in February, that first Wednesday in February. That's the one that you utilize, which this year was February 6th. There's an early national signing day now at the end of December around Christmas time. What made you wait and not sign in December, but wait until February. Because in December, I had to take the test one more time. So I wanted to be sure that I was going to be locked in. And another thing was that I wanted to keep the right people. Let's jump on this school because, I mean, I just wanted to kind of narrow itself down. Like, whoever go to this school, I mean, they just count to themselves out of my top. Whatever top five or whatever I had, I mean, I just let it do that, make it make it a little easier on you. And so when you when you have that, when you have that opportunity, and you go through, you know what you went through, and like you said, you had to take, you know, you had to take the test one more time. You didn't know if you were going to be eligible. Syracuse stayed with you, USF stayed with you, Arizona State with stayed with you as well. Uh, you know, with Arizona State, so. You know, what did that mean to you, that you had support and you had these schools staying with you despite the fact that you knew that, you know, 
you were in this position where you weren't guaranteed that you were going to be able to play. How much did it mean to you that, that these schools did not give up on you and just stayed with you through the process? I mean, it, mean, it meant a lot to me. Like, it just really just gave me more motivation to, like, get it done. Because, I mean, but don't stand with me. It's like, like, dang, I want to play at this next level. I mean, Syracuse is an ACC school. You don't want to give up on that. I mean, it was a lot. It, it meant a lot. <laughs> And you, when did you find out that you were eligible and ready to go? When you know when you took the test that last time, bring me into the moment that you found out that you were going to be eligible and able to go out there and and be able to play this upcoming season for college football. Uh, I kind of found out in the summertime. I found out because like I was in the locker room, we just had some workouts, and my high school coach he was like. It sounded like girls in the locker room yelling or something because I had got ACT score and it was a good score, so I was in there going crazy. <laughs> so he was like, man, I thought it was in there for I was like, nah, coach, I got my ACT score because we had my coach talk about it every day, like what what I needed to get done. And he was happy for me. And I was happy for myself. But then a couple of days later, he was like, you made a big jump on this test. Uh, we got to make sure that red flag you so you don't have to take this test one more time and I took it again and I did good but I didn't do as good as, as I did the first time I just went I just went up like it's a strong point in science so it gave me more points to level out with my uh, my GPA and I mean after that I was qualified I don't have to worry about nothing else and all I have to worry about is graduating and how important and how important is it for you to, you know, keep these grades up and, and obviously, you know, make sure that you take care of the classroom from here? You know what it's like to be put in a situation that, you know, you, you put yourself in that you have to get out of. You know what it's like to be in that situation of almost having football taken away from you or have to wait for football. So what did that teach you about academics and just how important it is for you to make sure that you take care of your academics moving forward? It taught me that get get on it early because you can't wait until the end and try to do stuff. Because that was my big problem. I will try to wait till the end. I just barely get by and I was thinking that was enough, but it's not. So when I come into Syracuse, I'm coming out with only a strong football mind. I got to come out with a strong academic mind too, ready to work in the classroom because without the classroom, you can't play. And that's one thing I find out. And so now that you have that and you've learned that, how did it make you appreciate the game more and appreciate the opportunity more? Has it made you a more well-rounded person knowing that, you know, you like you said, you can't wait until the last minute. you got to take care of business every day. Has it made you a better man at this point? Yes, sir, most definitely it made me a better man because, like, with education, you can't nobody take it from you. So, I mean, you got to get it done in class and you got to learn. It make you. It, it actually makes you a smarter player. A lot of people don't know, but it actually do. And how does it, you know, in your opinion, make you a smarter player, a better player? Because I mean, in the class, you got to be focused. On, it teaches you on the field, like when the coaches are saying stuff to you. It make it help you like grasp like what he's saying, get a better understanding because you're more focused. Because once you focus in class, when it's time to come to the field, I mean. You should be you should be like more focused on the field. So like you just everything just comes natural to you. That coming here from Steve Linton from the Dublin High School in Dublin, Georgia. Steve, you know, I appreciate you being here, appreciate you being a part of Wake Up Call with Dan Satora. Obviously, congratulations on not only, you know, having a, a new baby in the family, but also on doing what you needed to do in the classroom and on the field to have the opportunity to play college football and how important that is for you and to know that you are in control of your own destiny. We we do something called Rapid Fire to learn a little bit more about you, and I definitely want to have you back on the show to do that. So if you'd like to, we'd love to have you back on soon and have the fans get to know you a little bit better. Yes, sir. Well, I appreciate it, and you know, God bless with everything. Keep doing what you're doing, 
And I know Syracuse is excited to see, you know, what the pass rush is going to look like for the future. So you're going to have to uh, going to have to, you know, get out here and get out here pretty uh, pretty darn quick because they want to see you hit a few quarterbacks in the ACC. I'm sure. Oh yes, sir. All right. Well, I appreciate it. I look forward to talking with you. Okay. Okay.